One of the most fundamental things to understand when working with building automation systems is how to wire and configure the hardware. The BAC 9000 series VAV controller is one of the most versatile VAV controllers on the market. With integrated actuators, internal air pressure sensors, and other powerful features, they are ideal for new installations and upgrades of less efficient equipment, such as a VVT retrofit. Wiring a BAC 9000 series controller can be different than wiring controllers from other manufacturers, so we will explore each of the five connection types. Network wiring, inputs, outputs, adding a room sensor, and powering the controller. Let's begin with wiring the controller to a network. This BAC 9000 series controller connects to the network via BACnet over IP. This model includes two Ethernet ports with a built-in switch, allowing for easy daisy chaining on the network. So from the previous controller on the network, plug the Ethernet cable into one of the ports. Then, to daisy chain to the next controller, plug another cable into the second port. We also offer a BACnet over MSTP version, where the two Ethernet ports are replaced with an MSTP terminal block. When wiring to a BACnet over MSTP network, you will have three wires. Make sure to use 18 gauge shielded cable for your network. Assuming this controller is in the middle of the network, start by connecting the negative A wires in parallel with all other negative A wires on the network. And likewise, connect the positive B wires in parallel with all other positive B wires on the network. Also, connect the shields of the cables together at each device. Once joined, insert into the appropriate terminals on the controller. At one end of the network, it is important to connect the cable shield to a good earth ground to avoid network interference. If the controller is at either end of a BACnet MSTP network, turn the EOL or end of line switch to the on position. Your controller is now connected to the MSTP network. Since this is a BAC 9000 series controller, all the inputs are universal, meaning they can either be used for analog or binary signals. Looking at the inputs on the bottom of the unit, we see the UI for universal input and G and D for ground. When wiring the inputs, always make sure there is no power to the unit. The inputs consist of two wires, a signal wire and a common wire. Working with the first terminal block, insert the signal wire into the UI3 terminal and the common wire into the adjacent G and D terminal. The common wires for inputs in the same terminal block can be grounded together in the same terminal. Thus, the common wire for UI4 can go into the same ground terminal as UI3. Now, we are going to look at wiring the outputs. Looking at the outputs on the top of the unit, we see BO for binary output, UO for universal output, SC for switched common, and G and D for ground. The first three outputs are universal outputs, and the last four are binary. Let's start with wiring a universal output. You will have two wires, the signal wire and the common wire. The signal wire goes out from the UO output terminal to the device appropriate for its application. The common wire will return to the adjacent ground terminal. When using the universal outputs, your signal type will either be 0 to 12 volts for binary signal, or a range from 0 to 10 volts for analog. Unlike universal outputs, the binary outputs have an internal triac configuration requiring the switched common port to be supplied 24 volts from the transformer. Your signal wire goes out from the BO terminal to the device appropriate for its application. The common wire can then be grounded to the common terminal of the same transformer supplying power. Another simple item to wire is the room sensor. Each controller in the BAC 9000 series has a yellow room sensor ethernet port on the side of the controller. This port can be used to connect and power a KMC room sensor. Since the port is supplying power exclusively for the room sensor, make sure you do not plug in a network connected cable. That could cause damage to other hardware on the network. Also, keep in mind that the ethernet patch cable used for the room sensor can be a maximum of 150 feet long. The last step in wiring a BAC 9000 series controller is to connect the power. When connecting power, it is recommended that you use 12 to 24 gauge copper wire. Connect a 24 volt class 2 transformer to the black power terminal block of the controller. The transformer should be dedicated to this controller. When wiring, note the polarity of the controller's terminals. The common terminal is represented by a T-shape and the phase terminal is shown as a wavy line. This is very important. If wired incorrectly, the controller could be damaged and need replaced. When powered correctly, a green LED will turn on and begin flashing. To learn more about wiring similar products and exploring other solutions from KMC, Please check out our other videos or visit us on the web at kmccontrols.com.